dear students let us welcome to the new session chabischov's inequality such a wonderful inequality today we are going to see we need chabischov's inequality because it provides a very powerful tool for understanding and quantifying uncertainty in various scenarios where the detailed knowledge of probability distributions might be lacking for example um, if you know the discrete distributions it might be follow binomial or it might be follow poisson if the distribution is unknown still i need a prediction i need upper bound or lower bound if my data is not proper or it is not clear in such situation i cannot go and depend on any distribution where the one and only powerful tool people always run for chebyshev's inequality and if the data might be lacking or impractical here is the way we use chebyshev's inequality for the help when you see the application point of view people use in quality control risk management data analytics queuing theory machine learning signal processing etc 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 okay so we always concentrate on uh, the exam point of view let us go into the chebyshev's inequality what it is okay guys so we'll see i'm considering a random variable x so my mean is going to be mu and variance is going to be sigma square <coughs> this is the classical formula for chebyshev's inequality and some authors will use the other form what they will use uh, they want to replace this c by some k sigma where k greater than 0 so now there is a slight change in the formula we are going to see that alternate formula for chebyshev's inequality okay so the same thing now you should have to remember whenever people are asking to find the upper bound you should use this whenever they are asking for the lower bound you should remember this okay this is going to be a lower bound and this is going to be a upper bound so with this idea we'll directly go into the problem so here i'm going to give some application problem one side uh, the other side some simple standard problems to find the upper bound and lower bound using chebyshev's inequality <coughs> sorry let's go into the problem guys so i'm going to consider a random variable x so let x be a random variable so here directly the data is given mean is 12 and the variance is 9 so what they are asking you the probability function is not known as i said when the probability function is not known then i cannot do any approximation i cannot go for any distributions or method the one and only big bosses chebyshev's inequality when the probability function is not known i am going to find probability of probability of x lies between 18 to 6 that's it guys so it's a very direct problem so we can easily see this problem okay let's go first of all let us write what all the data is given mu is equal to 12 it is given sigma square is going to be 9 so as i said standard deviation is always the positive square root of sigma square so we have to take only 3 we should not take the negative minus 3 we should not take for sigma <coughs> now the problem is ready let's go so you see here in my question i am finding x lies between what 6 to 18 so in this case 
I am going to use the formula what lower bound. So my formula for lower bound is x minus mu simply less than k sigma is greater than or equal to 1 by 1 minus k square. So now I know all the data. I am going to compare this current data with my question. Okay, let's go. So x my mu is going to be 12 and sigma is going to be 3. Sigma is going to be 3 and k is unknown to me greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 by k square. So we know already we discuss all in our previous problems what we discuss uh, if there is a line between positive infinity to negative infinity mod x less than or equal to 1 I will take with 1 0 minus 1 so mod x less than or equal to 1 means it lies between 0 to 1 in the positive and minus 1 to 0 so totally it lies between minus 1 to 1 okay done so now I am going to apply this here okay so I will write directly what it is minus 3k x minus 12 plus 3k is going to be greater than or equal to 1 by 1 minus 1 by k square so I don't need the 12 I want x because my question is very clear uh, 6 to 18 so I am going to add 12 on the inequality so it's going to be 12 minus 3 sorry 12 minus 3k the one side then you will be having capital X and 3k plus 12 guys so 1 minus so now just a comparison it's simple I want to find probability of x lies between 6 to 18 now I have to compare this data okay either I have to compare this with 18 or I have to compare this with 6 so both are same okay so now what I am going to do I can take the positive side I am going to compare it so 3k plus 12 I can say it as 18 so 3k is equal to 6 and k is equal to 1 by 2 finally I found this k is equal to 1 by 2 so now what I will do if I substitute k equal to 1 by 2 here automatically what I will get guys I will be getting uh, sorry the k is going to be yeah a small typo k is going to be 2 yeah thank you so k is going to be 2 here okay so now I am going to substitute this k value here so when I substitute here what would I get 12 minus 2 3 is so 6 it's going to be 6 and then when I substitute the other side I am going to get 18 so my solution is going to be 1 minus 1 by 2 square is it clear guys so this is what I have to found this is my achievement like now I found the bound 6 less than x less than 18 uh, when I simplify I will be getting 3 by 4 so what I say the probability of x lies between 6 to 18 is what 6 to 18 is going to be minimum 75 percent because it's greater than or equal to 3 by 4 so it has a good bound so I can proceed further hope you understand okay let's go into the next problem so uh, the previous problem is very very direct problem so now let us go into a different problem and we try to attack so x is here random variable 
now for this problem actually uh, we need to know what is mean by binomial theorem all these things we are going to uh, learn in unit 2 right now we will learn the data then and there what we require for the problem guys okay let's go okay guys so x is a random variable now see the beauty of this problem a fair die is thrown i am throwing this fair die 720 times guys so when the data is very small i can do some probability and i will find the thing now what they say use chubby chow's inequality use chubby chow's inequality to find a lower bound so they will mention to find a lower bound or upper bound you have to use the problem according to the need of the question bound for a lower bound for probability what is the probability of getting probability of getting 100 to 146 says oh my god so now 720 times the die is thrown i want to find the probability lower bound to get 6 between 100 to 140 times okay a very interesting problem let us go and solve the problem okay guys so now as i said um, the die or coin all those things will follow binomial distribution so i will take probability of success my success is getting what six when you throw a die probability of getting six is one by six not only six two three one four five whatever it is it's going to be one by six so i always take success as p one by six so we know the classical formula total probability is always one so in binomial we have only what success and failure so obviously q is going to be five by six so now we have my p and q here so to apply chevis chaus we want to find the inequality we need two important data it depends on mean and then variance or standard deviation whatever it is we know the formula for mean in binomial distribution is np and the variance is going to be npq in binomial distribution okay now you see my n is 720 times my n is going to be 720 times so my mean is going to be 720 into 1 by 6 and my variance of x is going to be 720 into 1 by 6 into 5 by 6. Now what we are going to do from this we are going to find the required lower bound guys. Let's go. Yeah just a second. okay let's go so now we need to find the mean from the given data so mean is going to be very easy use your calculator i said mean is this i insisted many times don't waste your time by doing manual calculation mu and sigma is going to be sigma square is 100 and standard deviation is always positive so my sigma is going to be 10 okay that's it guys now let us go into the problem okay so what we have to do now i want to find the lower bound i clearly said so lower bound means it will be getting like this upper bound means it will be getting 
like this. Okay, you just remember, it's a trick. So now, I want to find the lower bound. So, probability of x minus mu less than c. So, you see, here in the previous problem, I use k sigma formula. Here, I am using c. It doesn't matter. Just for your reference, I am using two different formulas, nothing else. So, 1 minus sigma square by c square. So, whatever you use, it is going to be correct. Nothing wrong in it. So, now we know that mu is 120. Now, after this, problem is nothing because we fixed all the data. 1 minus 10 by. So, sigma square is 100. So, it will be 100 by c square. So, as usual, I will write minus c, x minus 120 and c. So, greater than or equal to 100 by c square. So, now, as usual, I want to get x because I need a lower bound. Okay. So, if I add minus 120 on both sides, so 120 minus c, x, c plus 120, it's going to be 1 minus 100 by c square. That's it guys. Now you can easily manipulate the data because what is given out of 720 times, what is the probability like the lower bound to get 100 to 140 sixes. So now I want to get, yes exactly, I want to get 100 here and I want to get 140 here. <coughs> Sorry. So now what I will do in this case, I just want to match the data. Okay. So either you take the left one or the right one. I am taking this 120 minus C. I am going to match with 100. So 120 minus 100 is going to be my C. So my C is going to be 20. Now the problem over. I found the C. So when I apply C is equal to yes 20 here it's going to be obviously 100 less than X. When I apply 20 I will be getting 140 greater than or equal to 100 by 20 square. Okay. So when you simplify I will be getting 1 minus 100 by 400. So it is going to be 3 by 4. So you see now we found the approximation like getting 100 to 146 is as a lower bound. So there is a chance of 75%. That's it guys. Hope now you got a clear idea about the Chavishyav's inequality. Let's go into the next problem. So what we can do, we can go for a different problem because we are dealing with what? Lower bound. Let us go and deal some upper bound. Now, it, now it is a discrete random variable. It is clearly given a discrete random variable takes the value minus 1, 0 and 1 and their probabilities are what? 1 by 8, 3 by 4 and again 1 by 8 and we can check always the total probability is 1 respectively here. So now what we have to evaluate, I have to evaluate this probability of x minus mu greater than or equal to 2 sigma. This is what I have to evaluate. And what is the extra data they are saying? Compare with your compare with the uh, with your upper bound with Chebyshev's inequality. So I am going to evaluate the problem by Chebyshev's as well as the direct one and I am going to compare it. So there might be deviations 
or there might be same let us see so what we are do so since it is a discrete random variable obviously i can go always for what the table x and probability of x so what are the values of x minus 1 0 and 1 will be having 1 by 8 3 by 4 and 1 by 8 so now you can see the probability distribution for this problem okay guys so now to use chebis chaus what it is needed it is obvious we need e of x since it is a discrete random variable it's going to be x into probability of x so now we have to multiply each column and you have to add when you do that minus 1 by 8 plus 0 plus 1 by 8 it's going to be 0 great now to find the variance i need the support x square so when i square and add i am going to get 1 by 8 plus 0 plus 1 by 8 so it's going to be 2 by 8 that is going to be 1 by 4 guys so problem over now we know the mean and variance my mean is going to be mu that is 0 and my variance is going to be yeah we know the formula e of x square minus e of x whole square that's it guys so now you see x square is 1 by 4 and e of x is 0 so i'll be directly getting 1 by 4 as my variance so then my sigma is going to be 1 by 2 since my sigma square is going to be 1 by 4 so now we get all the relevant data so let us go into the problem what they we need okay what they are asking let's go so what is asked to us they tell us to find the bound what is it probability of mod x minus mu greater than or equal to 2 sigma okay let's do it so how to do this <coughs> so since we know the value of mu mu is 0 and sigma is going to be 1 by 2 guys because we have already found the data so it is going to be simply mod x greater than or equal to 1 mod x greater than or equal to 1 better always what we do we always go for the classical way what is the classical way i can use mod x less than or equal to now you see let us write the formula so mod x less than 1 means i can write x lies between 1 to 1 okay if it is less than or equal to 1 i can write like this now here we have greater than or equal to 1 so either you can uh, change it or you can directly apply so if it is mod x greater than or equal to 1 means 0 1 minus 1 so it is including this area 1 and above minus 1 and below so i can directly write this as 1 and minus below is going to be x equal to minus 1 and one above is what x equal to 1 so from the table it is very clear what we have we have minus 1 is 1 by 8 probability for one the probability is 1 by 8 so i can write this as 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 it's going to be 2 by 8 that is 1 by 4 guys so i found the probability using what a direct method so by direct method my solution is what by direct calculation my bound is 1 by 4 now let us do with chebis chaus what chebis chaus inequality says yeah do you remember the formula 
yes probability of probability of mod x minus mu greater than or equal to k sigma is going to be less than or equal to 1 by k square guys so now uh, from the question it is very clear k is going to be what 2 and we know that mu also okay if you substitute you will be getting the problem in a very easy way so mod x minus 0 greater than or equal to 2 sigma that is I don't want to substitute all this kind of things directly I am going to evaluate this 2 square so I am going to get the solution as 1 by 4 you see by Chavis Chaus my answer is 1 by 4 and direct method my also my answer is what 1 by 4 and it need not to be all the k always okay it need not to be always sometime what will happen uh, you will be getting some variations too so your actual probability may deviate with the Chavishchev's inequality sometimes okay hope you understand the problem so we did one problem for the lower bound and the other for the upper bound guys now I think you are very clear about Chebyshev's inequality. So there is other problem. It's also very interesting. Might be, yeah. I'll do the other problem also. Let us see what they are saying. X denote the sum of numbers obtained when two dice are thrown. It's a very interesting problem. When two dice are thrown. I am going to sum it when through die like two dice are thrown. I am going to sum it and an obtain we are going to obtain the upper bound. So they are going to tell you like they are telling to find the upper bound when probability of x minus 7 mod x minus 7 greater than or equal to 3 and they are telling you to compare with the exact probability. That is great. Okay. So, what I will do, I will leave this problem for your practice guys. Okay, so I cannot solve all the problems here. I can leave this problem here for practice and you can see the material which is available in the description. You can download it and you can learn by yourself because it is very simple. So, we end the session successfully for the problem solving idea for Chabis Chow's inequality. Thank you for your patience and watching the video. Till then, thank you again guys. See you in the next video. Bye bye.